Caribbean. Very few people have heard of this island, but the ones who have will never forget it. And in some cases, they may never leave it. We want you to get comfortable because we're going to be searching high and low for the green monkey. Never heard of the green monkey? Well, you probably never heard of St. Kitts either. Today, we're going to change all that. We heard from the people in town that Greg from Greg's Safari is the man we should see if we want to find the green monkeys. Now, Greg wanted us to experience the monkey's natural habitat, so he drove us to the base of a rainforest, where we were going to be hiking up through the rainforest to the top of a volcano. We have an exciting hike ahead of us. I'm taking you up a mountain that's uh, 3,800 feet high. And you expect and me to get all the way up there, right? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we started our hike up through the rainforest in search of those green monkeys. Green monkeys were introduced as pets here in St. Kitts by the French in the 17th century. It's kind of funny, but the English write in their own history that the French purposefully let their monkeys, their pet monkeys, go when they were kicked out of the island in 1703 because they knew, the French knew, that the monkeys would be a problem for the English planters. <laughs> Unfortunately, on most parts of the island, the monkeys are considered a nuisance or a pest, kind of like the way I consider cameraman Ed. The thing about these monkeys, too, is that uh, they're very destructive to the farmer's crops. This is why they're a problem for us, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. You know, living for 40 years and having an appetite like that, you can imagine, come upon yeah. a vegetable patch and in, in half an hour, the whole vegetable patch is gone, you know. So uh. the farmers here are forced to employ armed dogs, uh, wind chimes, wow. you know, scarecrows to try every, they try every time to scare the monkeys away. Does it work? It does work, and you know, but the monkeys are smarter, so every week or every other week they have to come around and change the decoy to make sure that the monkeys uh, are They're kept primates. on their toes. They're like us, they yeah. learn. They're right. very smart. <laughs> yes, wow. exactly. These monkeys are omnivorous, which means they'll eat practically anything they get their hands on. So they literally eat anything, you know, for protein, a young chick, maybe a, um, a bird egg. Mm -hmm. But ideally, you know, tender growing shoots, uh, green fruit, this is the type of thing they'll, they'll tend to eat. Or in the villages, lollipops. <laughs> yes. Popcorn. <laughs> yeah, they're wasteful. They'll just take a bite, throw it down, move on to something else. Do you think they're uh, real social animals? Do they stick in a social group or...? Um, well, yes, they do, but what tends to happen is that once the males mature, I don't know, four years of age, they fight for the dominant position. Uh, the females are allowed to stay on. And so there's an alpha male, really, in a troop of monkeys, which can be as many as 40, apparently. Um, they uh, roam around territorially, and with the alpha male in charge, he's called a colonel. The first 1,500 feet of the hike was tough, but nothing compared to the next 1,500 feet. After the halfway point, because of all the rain washing away the mud, the tree roots were exposed and climbing got a little bit tougher. We had to climb up and over the large roots, which got a little treacherous at times, especially on the way down the other side. It's just a matter of twisting your ankle or even breaking your leg, unfortunately, if you're not careful. And it is important that you focus on what you're doing, especially from the halfway mark up in that all these roots are exposed and you know you can damage yourself if you're not careful. This is the sap of a tree that's native to the Caribbean. It looks like wax. It's just like wax. And uh, the beauty of this is that it's highly flammable. So I brought on some matches. You have I guess a I need to my yeah. As you can tell with us talking, this hike has taken the breath out yeah. of all of us. Now, the sap is called gommier, and it smells a lot like eucalyptus. So not only does it make for a great torch, but it burns like incense. Unlike other monkey species, the vervet monkey doesn't have a prehensile tail, which means they can't use it to grab onto branches or things, but they do use it for balance. One of the biggest reasons the rainforest is an ideal place for these monkeys is the greenery. There's an abundance of plant life that can sustain their little bodies and give them shelter. Welcome to the volcano rim. Oh, oh my God, we're at the top. Yeah, this is the volcano rim. This is it. Yeah. And this is the cold forest, yeah? Oh, wow. And you can see the pinnacle as well that we saw from lower down just there. 
Oh, okay, so that's the big rock. Yeah. At the edge of the volcano, it was unbelievably windy. And because the path was so skinny, the handful of people made it hard to move around. And what's cool too is you can sometimes look down over this giant crater mm -hmm. uh, when it's clear, of course, and see troops of monkeys running across, scampering across the savanna at the bottom of the crater. Really? Yes, it's really quite neat because the crater. After we cleaned ourselves up in the rainforest, Greg drove us to Turtle Beach, where a troop of monkeys are known to hang out at the Turtle Beach restaurant. Welcome to Turtle Beach, everybody. Land <laughs> of monkeys. <laughs> Gary owns the Turtle Beach restaurant, and he's partly responsible for the monkeys visiting their bar. I actually bought the property here about 15 years ago, and uh, probably eight years ago, there was this one female that used to come around and like get close, and so we started giving it fruit and juice, and named the chippy and you could always see the wild ones sitting in the trees like being jealous that she was getting food and they had to go and scrunt and hunt for it you know yeah. and uh, after about maybe a month or two um, a couple of the younger ones started getting brave and realized that we weren't going to harm them so they started coming around and we fed them too they were they were happy really and then the tourists started liking seeing them so it became a great pr for oh, us you know so, so now all the tourists come and they oh, yeah. feed them too well yeah we have peanuts they can give to them you know, and, um, it's a good, good for us, good for them. As you can hear by Greg and Gary's accent, they too are Cartesian. They're fifth generation, born and raised in St. Kitts. It's important to watch your food because these guys are little thieves. They have really bad table manners. Well, these things do really well for themselves here, huh? Yep. The territorials are living troops, and it's there like this. Yeah. Each troop has an alpha male, so he's a, he's a boss of the troop. He'll feed first, and uh, he has to say when to come to feed, when to leave, and they're all travel as a troop you know so it's um it's pretty interesting and what's amazing too is that the the alpha male will be challenged like once every three four five years <laughs> i noticed a lot of them have little ones yeah is this the time of year where they have little ones yeah actually the last maybe two or three weeks they've been having a lot of young and it seems to be around this time of the year, august september mm -hmm. and uh and that like the, that generation would grow up and next year all those ones would be you know a year old and then you have the new generation coming along so the troop for some reason seems to balance out about 30 30 monkeys the babies are the cutest when they're born they weigh between 10 ounces and a pound the mothers kind of protect them the nurse from the moms and then uh, like i said after about a month or two to start getting independence or a month so the, the moms are always watching them but they'll run off and the mom is always watching if she sees a little threat she'll snatch it up and go up in the tree you know <laughs> it's funny to watch them play because when they get independence she's gonna push the moms away like leave me alone leave me right. alone and then the mother still grab it and say come with me you know it's, it's amazing <laughs> Gary brought us to his house so we could meet Tarzan, the monkey he rescued. Little Gary told us he loved to swim around the pool on hot days, but unfortunately because of the camera he was playing shy. So it took a little coaxing yeah, to get him in the water. We used his favorite food. Down. It doesn't look Down. <laughs> we realized that Tarzan was no dummy because if he was going to go in the water swimming, so was Gary. Oh, look at him swim. Look at her go. Come here. Oh. <laughs> if you think that was funny, after a refreshing yeah. swim in the pool, Tarzan loves to be dried off. Dry your after that? Oh. oh my god. <laughs>